Season two, episode 39 of the Hall of Fame show. And I don't know about you, Evan. I, I, I threw on a random hockey jersey. I got the Buffalo Sabres because why not? Um, mm-hmm. I am in hockey heaven right now because hockey's back. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. How you doing, brother? I'm doing very well. It's amazing that you randomly picked that because I have uh, I have some trivia for you. And my hockey one involves uh, involves some uh, interesting things that, that go yeah. with your jersey. So okay, so you said you were going to open up with, with some hockey trivia. So let, let's uh, let's do it. Yeah. So I, I have I have a hockey question. I have a football question. I have a baseball question. I just have a random fact I found interesting this week. All right. So which which would you like to start with? Hockey. Hockey. Okay, I'm going to give you four names of people who started this season in the National Hockey League. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Tell me what the four of them have in common. Okay. Tyler Ennis. Mm -hmm. Tyler Myers. Okay. Nathan Gerby. Mm -hmm. And Andre Sakara. They've never been in my kitchen. That is correct. Other than that. I, I don't know. They are the only four active NHL players who have ever played for the Sabres in a playoff game. Jesus Christ. Wow. This is from Joe, Joe DiBiase on Twitter. And I went looked it up and he's correct. Tyler Ennis, Tyler Myers, Nathan Gerby, and Andre Sakara are the only four players active in the NHL have ever played a playoff game for the Buffalo Sabres. And if you think that's crazy, let me give you this list of people. These are the only players in the NHL who've ever played against the Sabres in a playoff game who are still active. You ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Zdeno Chara. Who's Jason, 43. Yeah. Jason Spezza. Jeff Carter. Claude Giroux. James Van Riemsdyk. Joe Thornton. Johnny Boychuk. Patrice Bergeron. Blake Wheeler. Milan Lucic. Sergei Bobrovsky, and I guess Zach Ronaldo, who's still under contract, but is in the minor leagues, will probably never play in the NHL again. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half. That's a combination that you would expect to uh, go to Denny's for the early bird special. <laughs> <laughs> the vast majority, I think. Yeah, Bergeron's this is, this is the guy who's older than all of them. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, Bergeron's, I think, the youngest of them, probably, and he's like thirty-six. Well, I guess Lucic yeah. probably is. How's oh, Lucic? All right, that's interesting. All right, what else you got? Yeah, so the last time they played a playoff series, by the way, was 2011. It's been 10 years since the Sabres have qualified for the playoffs. That's so so they, they they played in, they were in the playoffs in 10 and 11, and they missed in 09, 08, and 07. So then you have to go back to 2006, which, I, is, I, how, which is how Joe Thornton played them because they played the Bruins in 06. I have to admit, uh, when I redo my, or redid rather, my Buffalo Sabres all-time top 50, it wasn't that hard. Were, were Ed, Tyler Ennis, Tyler Myers, Nathan Gerby, or Andre Sakara on it? The first two were, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, the last sense. two. Tyler were. Ennis, certainly. Yeah. But yeah, that one, that was pretty crazy. Uh, from baseball, uh, for the, it uh, happened last week, uh, there are now in the history of the postseason in baseball, uh, eight games have lo- been won by a walk-off homer hmm. by a catcher. Oh, wow. In the history of postseason baseball. So seven teams have had a catcher hit a walk-off homer. What is the only team that's happened, ha- had it happen twice now? That has it happened? That- it happened last week. For, oh. So one team, had, we came this first team ever to have two catchers hit walk-off homers to win a playoff game. Giants? Braves? Probably one of the most post- famous postseason homers is the first one. Uh, shit. I don't know. Red Sox? Red Sox. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Car- Carlton Fisk, of mm-hmm. course, was the first one in the 75 World Series. Yeah. And Christian Vazquez became the second uh, in game two, or no, game three of the. Uh, of the uh, series against the Rays. And congrats to your team, by the way. I'll certainly be cheering for them uh, over Houston. That's for goddamn sure. Well, I mean, it's it's the cheater bowl as far as the rest of the league is concerned because Alex Cora, and uh, to, to be honest, the Red Sox, the Red Sox should have been much more busted for cheating uh, before Alex Cora. Um, they had, uh, they're using Apple watches in the dugout, which is ridiculous. So mm-hmm. they should have been absolutely busted. I am, I am nothing if not, 
Oh, I mean, people will probably call me a Patriots homer, which I am, but I fully admit they should have been busted for for violating stuff on uh, on Spygate, although it's not as bad as everyone's making out to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and the Red Sox should have been completely busted on the the Apple Watch much more than they were. But now it's Alex Cora, who allegedly was the mastermind behind the Astros thing against the Astros. So this is one that everyone's hoping for a meteor. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I wasn't expecting this team to do to beat the Rays. I was expecting the Rays to win pretty easily. Uh, yeah, you gotta leave, gotta leave the hat on. You got that whole Irish look going on. But uh, I, I'm yeah. sort of digging there. Thank you. Uh, I, I was told this week I looked so Boston, it was ridiculous. Well, I also was wearing a Red Sox <laughs> mask at work t- this week. Um, but uh, yeah, but the, the Red Sox, I was not expecting them to beat the Rays. As long as they beat the Yankees, I really don't care. You said that uh, last week. Yeah. Yeah. Ev- everything else is entirely gravy. I'm expecting to lose the Astros. If they win, I'll expect them to lose the, the Braves, Dodgers, or, or Giants, whoever ends up being the last mm. team. So, um, but who knows? Maybe they'll surprise me. Right. Kike Hernandez is ridiculous. And Come you got on. some football for me. Football. The uh, Jacksonville Jaguars set a record this week other than just going 0 and 5. What is it? Okay, that I know because I read that. Uh, they've lost 20 in a row. Uh, not only that. Oh. What? Because the team is, lo- they're not, 20 in a row is not the all-time record. Oh. They were, uh, they were in a tie, they were a three way, uh, four-way tie with 19 in a row. They became the first team uh, in the history of the NFL to go their first five games with zero field goals. Oh. They have they're 0 for 5 in kicking field goals so far this season. They've also missed okay. three extra points. But they are the first team ever to not be able to kick a field goal successfully through the first five weeks of a season. My bet's looking pretty good, huh? It is looking pretty good. Yeah. And and finally, just my last random fact to talk about Ireland here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ireland, they said uh, actually last week, they determined that Ireland went over uh, 5 million people in population. Okay. Mm-hmm. The last time there were 5 million people in Ireland was 1851. I love this random fact. I would never have known. It was just, it was sort of like, it was like yeah. a mind blowing fact. Just yeah, yeah. potato fair, famine and everybody leaving in the big diaspora and everything else. I should, I should be drinking vodka instead of uh, Bailey's, huh? Well, Bailey's is Irish though. You got that. So I got that. Um, yeah. People think I'm Irish actually. I, I got the map of Ireland in my face. Young yeah. sir. Yeah. Well, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But Sorry. before before I got all gray in my beard, it was all red. So I had red, yeah. in my face, but not but not in the not in the hair. But uh, my my beard has been growing. I've been growing it out since July. It needs to be trimmed, but I'm I'm keeping it for a, a uh, Halloween costume I'm going to wear with my daughter. Oh, um, what is it? Uh, there's a TV show that was on Disney Plus. We read the book and then watched a the show called uh, The Mysterious Benedict Society. Okay. And she wants to be one of the characters and the guy, uh, Mr. Benedict himself, who leads the society, has like a big bushy beard and kind of crazy hair. So I'm just leaving the beard that long. And after that, I mean, they're at least going to trim it up or maybe just go crazy uh, mustache for n- November for, for oh, November. Not. So oh, we'll not. say. So uh, I, t- I told you I have a surprise bit for you. It's a minor Yeah, surprise. I do want to hear this. Sorry. Yeah. That was a lot of that was a lot of facts at the beginning. I don't know. I love there, it. There's there some good ones. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... For our wager, I've in, in the wager that we set last week was was a fun one, I think, and not a harmful one. We're not tattooing stupid shit on our body, which you said you weren't going to do immediately, and I wasn't going to ask you to. So that was never a problem. Fair enough. Yeah, uh, and it's just a, a fun thing. We were the Olympics are coming. We're both hockey fans. Canada mm-hmm. men's team, Canada women's team, U.S. men's team, U.S. women's team. And then overall gold medals. We're going to do a best of three. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm not the only one in the wager. Andrea Ooh. Tessman is joining us. Oh, and how is Andrea joining us? Oh, same thing. You're going to either sing to us or we're singing to you. And we're singing oh, the Losers National Anthem. Fair enough. Okay. And Andrea is a big fan of women's hockey. Okay, cool. So, uh, so I, I, I talked to her last night. We, ta- we discussed on our award-winning show, How the Hell Did This Go to Number One?, it's Last award-winning. Night, sure, it, it's the be, it's the best show ever about uh, 
number one songs in the United States by two Canadians. CTV didn't do one of these. <laughs> if I say it, it's on the internet, so it must be true. They talk, talk it, yeah. You can't lie on the internet. Would you hear exactly. that? Yeah. Internet. No, God, no. So yeah, we we did last night. Uh, Undercover Angel by Alan O'Day. Wow, what a creepy ass song that was, which I had no idea. There are a lot of creepy ass songs that have gone to number one. So. Yeah, uh, that one I barely remember. And then when I when I was listening to, what the fuck was this? Fair enough. Yeah. So at the end of the show, I said, uh, this is the bet I've got with Evan. And uh, you want to get on, on on this? And she said, yes. Also, that will sort of drown out my shitty singing. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a bit preventative on my part. Mm. Fair uh, enough. Yeah, this kind of segues into my shit box and my shit box, which for those wondering, I just talk about some random shit that comes to my mind. I actually have something super positive right now. Wow, a yeah. positive shit box. Yeah, it's a positive shit box. Because just because you're talking shit doesn't mean it has to be bad, right? Fair. Yeah, we got something dark coming up, so we might as well just. I wanted to sort of like. Did, like so, something happened this week. It's weird. Yeah. Oh God, Jesus. So I just wanted to say, and this is also why I put on a hockey jersey. Uh, I've got hockey on in the background. I watched hockey on ESPN last night. Hockey is certainly, I don't know that hockey ever left the USA, but it's going to be, this is going to be a great year. Uh, the double feature on ESPN was fantastic. Uh, I watched Gretzky here on TNT and he, but whatever. <laughs> Gretzky should never be around a live microphone again, but mm -hmm. I, I still, I still love watching him play. But anyway, I am so thrilled with hockey this year. Yes. Again, uh, ESPN, we, we've shit on them a lot and rightfully so. And we're going to do that again tonight, so don't worry about it. Okay, yeah. well, I think they did a great job with their hockey coverage. Uh, just like one line, I, I, I apologize for the announce because I can't remember which announcer said it, but it was in the second period of the first game. We just said, you know, we're going to be trying some new things. Some things are going to work and some things won't. Just saying that is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, just like, we, okay, we're going to go all in on hockey. If I'm the WNBA, I'm not trying to shit on the WNBA because I'm not this, but I'd be worried because now that's, you're dropped down again on the backing order. Mm. Yeah. Hey, it, it, it's, it's 40, 40 at halftime, by the way, in game two of the uh, WNBA uh, championship right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was sort of hoping you were going to give me some uh, soccer updates actually during this. I could give you soccer updates. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I agree with Hercules Gomez, who is uh, a former U S national team player that the biggest issue with the, with the very young U.S. national team, is its very inexperienced coach. Uh, we should never have lost to Panama. We have not lost to Panama in Panama and qualifying ever before earlier this week. And just to give you an update: uh, Canada came back and beat Panama Panama four to one. All right, oh, awesome. And how, uh, how so is a guy named Hercules Gomez not a pro wrestler? I know he's he's uh, Herc's Herc's a great guy. He's he just got the commentator job and he's doing excellently as a commentator. Commentators um, are so important. It, it's... Yeah, he is. He's doesn't pull, pull punches. So yeah, that's the good news for today. The U S actually beat Costa Rica. Um, so, which was a game I was worried we we're going to lose after we lost to Panama, mm -hmm. Canada beat Panama and Jamaica got their first win against Honduras. Reggae boys. Um, Gotta love it. So Honduras is now in last U S is temporarily in first. Uh, mm -hmm. Mexico is playing, um, is playing El Salvador right now. The game just started, but yeah, the, uh, I'm telling you, Canada's going to qualify for a world cup. I'm, per, I'm per, calling per, it right now. And yes. as of, as of the moment, you called that months ago. I did. Yeah. Uh, the U S has 11 points. Mexico has 11 points. Canada has 10 points. Top three Canada points automatically, right? Yep. Panama has eight, Costa Rica, six, El Salvador, five, Jamaica, five, Honduras, three. And number so, four goes against two. I'm sorry. The fourth place finisher goes where? Uh, so I don't know if that part's been officially determined, but there is a half place for Oceania, mm -hmm. a half place for uh, South America, a half place for Asia and a half place for North America. Okay. Gee, and I wonder so, who's going to win out of Oceania. Yeah, well, that's the thing. They're not even, they're going to, they just announced because they didn't know what to do about a tournament. Uh, they just announced that 
Uh, they're going to have whatever tournament they're going to have in March in Qatar. So all the so Kiribati and American Samoa and all those countries have to fly their teams to Qatar to play New Zealand and let New Zealand beat them and then go home. So, mm. but I I think yes, the reason, shopping's good. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't know. I think the reason for that may be they're thinking of doing. Usually, it's like a rant round robin where um, two the teams are just drawn in like mm. a cycle. Yeah. Uh, like the if the Asia plays North America and Oceania plays South America next time North America plays Oceania like they rotate around, mm-hmm. but I, they they haven't officially decided as far as I can tell um, as to what did that happen. It's possible they may end up just doing like a little round robin tournament in in Qatar, bring the four teams all there, and and have the top two advance. I'm not sure if that's what they're going to do or not, but mm-hmm. yeah, the the continent that gets screwed in this whole thing as usual is Africa. Yeah, you've, have, seen, you've said that a few times. Yeah. yeah, they have they have five countries who make the World Cup. Uh, South America has four and a half, technically, four spots. Mm-hmm. North America's got three and a half. Asia's got uh, four and a half. Europe's got 13. Uh, but like Africa with the only five, there's legitimately at least eight or nine countries who should be mm-hmm. in the World Cup cycle every single time. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, before we go to your death march, I just want to, can I promote a couple of things on the site that just uh, went hundred percent promote yeah. away, man. This is, this is your thing. I'm, That's I'm ours. really, yes. ours, man. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've just up, so just updated on not in is the top 50 players in the NBA active players based on their hall of fame credentials. So that's mm. just been updated. Uh, Giannis is the biggest jump. Well, Giannis is the oh, biggest yeah. jump to, from anything to the top 10. Uh, Jokic is the biggest biggest jump overall. Uh, the amount of Lakers on this is crazy or scary. Well, they're the oldest team I think in NBA history. This it has team. to be right. Yeah, it's 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 darn close. If not, they, they I saw I actually think I saw that as a headline on the Ringer and didn't have time to read the article. Mm-hmm. If the Lakers are the oldest team, there was a picture of LeBron with uh, gray hair and a long beard. Which, which gray hair, the real hair or the fake hair he puts on the top of his head? I believe it's the one from Space Jam. <laughs> yeah, his hairline never looked better than it did in, the, in cartoon form, huh? Yeah. Ooh, that shit movie that was. As, as, as one commenter once said on a post, I see all these portraits of people back in the 1800s. There's not a single zit or scar or anything. They all have perfect complexions. And the commentator below said, that's what happens when the person who's painting it is gets paid by you. <laughs> although, although Lincoln never had a good picture, did he? He apparently didn't pay enough. It's a picture, not a portrait. Uh-huh, Portraits I mean, are different. So it's a, it's a, it's a, I guess that's yeah. what happens when you free the hell. Wow. Okay, that 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 one <laughs> that should be one I should edit out. I'm not going to because it's a pain in the ass. Sorry. Okay. Hey, I'm still better than John Gruden. Oh, is that where we're going? Uh, no, no, no. Well, we're, we're going to get there. On elevator, speaking of, elevator speaking of Death March. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, no, so we're going to start with um, a couple of... We didn't have a whole bunch of uh, big names who passed away. Two weeks in a row, which is kind of nice, right? Yeah, we had one Hall of Famer, as far as I could tell, in anything. Um, so let me just see here. Uh, we lost from uh, from the NFL, Warren Bryant, who was a sixth pick of the 1977 draft, uh, was offensive lineman for the Falcons and Raiders, uh, passed away at the age of 65. He played from 77 to 84 with the Falcons and got cut and played half a season with the Raiders. Uh, but yeah, he passed away at 65. Um, we lost, uh, let's see here, that is the only... Uh, we lost from the world of wrestling, uh, Reggie Parks. Yeah. yeah. Canadian professional wrestler and engraver. And engraver known for his work designing the championship belts for wrestling. I didn't know that. Arts and boxing promotions. Yeah. Uh, he designed uh, one of my favorite actual belts. I, I think I got this right. Uh, the Winged Eagle one from the WWF. Like, mm-hmm. like back in the day. And uh, so like he did a whole pot, like just 
piles of stuff. So I'm, I'm glad you brought him up because I, I was going to, if uh, that wasn't one of your, your mentions. So like he just like that in itself, I mean, championship belts in wrestling, are, that might be one of the coolest things I think ever. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, that's part of the thing about wrestling, just the belt. Like you'll, you'll see that with other, other teams when they're like, they think they're the best. They'll get themselves belts that look like the WWE one. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Uh, Triple H sends them that, uh, you mm-hmm. know, from, from the WWE. Yeah. Like, st- like for me, it's the Stanley cup and then a championship belt in wrestling. I don't know what it is, but boxing belts usually suck. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, but he uh, he passed away um, at the age of eighty seven of COVID yeah. in in Tucson, Arizona. So I, I read yeah. too he wrestled into the mid eighties, uh, but he, he wrestled under a mask because like his body was still like super incredible, but you know his face was older. Yeah, so, and you, God knows all of those guys in the eighties look so young. <laughs> I mean, Brutus the Barber Beefcake couldn't have been a day over fifteen. <laughs> Brutus looked pretty good in the eighties. That is Come true. On. I know. I I say Brutus uh, lives in my hometown, so you'll see him every once in a while. <laughs> at, yeah, he lives in Winchester, Mass. Uh, or at least he did. I don't know if he still lives there. He lived there when mm. I was growing up. You'd see him at our little beach. We had a beach that was closed half the year because the arsenic levels too, were too high. Um, which meant, why would you go the other half of the year? Be my question. Uh, but you'd see him down there with like the spandex pants still on with lightning bolts down the side. No. So oh, he, was, yeah. he was going there in his wrestling gear? Basically, yeah. Oh, so. no. But anyway, uh, Reggie Parks Reggie Parks was 87. <laughs> yeah, let's move on out of this. Yeah. <laughs> this um, is from, uh, from the world of entertainment, uh, Granville Adams, probably best known as Zahir Arif from um, Oz. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, he passed away uh, at the only the age of uh, was that fifty? I think I read this fifty seven. Yeah, fifty uh, fifty eight. He had just turned okay. fifty eight. Okay. Um, but he uh, he passed away at the age of cancer. He asked passed away mm. from cancer. So he actually in two thousand seven, of course, was arrested and charged with negligent homicide from a man who died in a nightclub. Um. He pushed someone against the elevator doors and the doors became unhinged and the guy fell down the fell down the elevator shaft to his death. E. Yeah. So it's a tough thing to go, but yeah, he, Granville Adams was 58. Uh, we also lost uh, Shameless and Last Comic Standing at, uh, comedian uh, Ricardo Flanagan died of COVID at age 40, which is oh. kind of crazy. Um, okay, I missed that one. Yeah, just, uh, another one just passed away, uh, unfortunately, after not that long a time uh, suffering from, from the disease. COVID is a pain in it's just, just it just sucks. I don't have anything else to say about that. Um, from the world, uh, I also want to bring up one other, I'll, I'll bring up these last two at the end. Um, from the world of music, uh, we lost co-founder of the Chieftains, Patty Maloney. Passed away at the age of 83. Uh, those of you guys who don't know the Chieftains, they're probably the only traditional Irish band that would ever at least be thought of for the Rock Roll Hall of Fame. There's no other way I could think Seen of them twice. The most. Yeah. Um, he also did all sorts of session work. Other than that, with, for Mike Oldfield, the Muppets, uh, Gary Moore, Nick Mick Jagger, Paul McCartney, Sting, Don Henley, Stevie Wonder, and others. Uh, but he passed away suddenly in his sleep at the age of 83. Mm. Um, from the uh, the band, mostly known from the band Wham, D- uh, bass player Don- Dion Eustace passed away. You made, at the age you, you made me think, like, what, Andrew Ridgely died? <laughs> no, no, no. So they, they, they actually had other members of the band. They just didn't get to be in any of the videos. Um, we have a Dion Eustace died at the age of 65, uh, a musician and a singer best known as the uh, bass player of Wham. Um, he also, after George Michael went solo, served as George Michael's bassist for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, he was only 65. Uh, he also had his own album in 1989 that came out called Spell, which hit 89 on the charts. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Um, 
from uh, the post-punk band The Bush Tetras, D-Pop, passed away. Uh, he was one of the most important members. He's a drummer for the band. Uh, I don't know if you're a big Bush Tetras guy. They're one of the New York City's Not really. post-punk no. movement. No. Uh, but yeah, he passed away at the age of, I believe, hold on, let me make, get that right. Also at the age of 65. He was also in the Gun Club. Uh, if you mm. remember that band either. Yeah, I, so, I remember them very well, yeah. Um, Jim Pembroke, who passed away, the former lead singer of the Finnish, he was British, but the Finnish band Wigwam. If you remember Wigwam. Uh, he passed away at the age of 75 um, earlier this week. Uh, so that's it for music. Two interesting people, and I'll get to, I'll get to our one Hall of Famer. Uh, Victor Brykhanov passed away. Uh, Victor Brykhanov is probably one of the most infamous people in the world who you don't remember. Okay. He was the director and the manager of construction at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. <laughs> Okay. In charge of the plant from 1970 to 1986. So, so what and did he die of? His third arm? Uh, he was 80, 85. So it took a long time for the for it to catch up to him. Uh, but he'd suffered a couple of strokes uh, back a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, everybody else died, but he lived, the director of the plant lived another, what is this, 35 years. Hmm. So uh, also passing away a more probably well-known one of the true legends of Disney, Ruthie Thompson. Passed yeah, I read away. about this one. Yeah. Well, what was she a hundred or something? 111. Jesus. What was good on her? You know, what a she's, wonderful life that is. Huh? She start. She actually started as an animator on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Wasn't that in the thirties? 39. Okay. She worked on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. She was 29 years old when that came out. Or 37, I'm sorry. She was she's 37 when that came out. Oh, my she's God. Tw- she, I'm sorry. She's 27 when that came out. Okay. In 1937. Yeah, she was uh, Pinocchio, Dumbo, Fantasia, Sleeping Beauty. Like, uh, one, of my, one of my son's favorite, I, I, I got him uh, a copy of Donald and Math Magic Land. He watched that video like 40 times a row. But... Uh, Mary Poppins, Aristocats, Robin Hood, all the way up uh, through the 78. Remember the Lord of the Rings animated movie from when we were kids? Ralph Bashke? Uh, I don't know if that's Ralph Bashke. But yeah, she worked on that as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's Ralph Bashke, correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so she worked on that as well. So yeah, 111, which is... Well, that's a phenomenal life. We can only, we can only hope to have like half a life like that. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And then there are only, as far as I can tell, our only Hall of Famer who passed away this week is American Boxing Hall of Famer and Massachusetts legend Tony DeMarco, um, who this. was world doing? welterweight champion. Uh, for, he was 89 when he passed away. Uh, he held, see, he held the championship in, um, let's see, from 1955 through for welterweights through 19, oh, I'm sorry, we're reading this the wrong way. From 1955 through 19, well, it was later in 1955. So he's a welterweight champion from April 1st of 55 through November 30th of 55. Hmm. He fought 71 fights, 58 wins, 12 losses, one draw, um, 33 knockouts, um, and was knocked out seven times. But he was elected to the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2019, and I believe the American Boxing Hall of Fame somewhere before. There's actually uh, uh, there's actually a street named after him in the North End of oh, Boston. Okay. Nice. So, uh, so yeah. So it's Tony DeMarco Way, uh, which my sister actually I think I've at least parked on the street when my sister lived in the North End. I'm not sure whether I didn't even know you had a sister. Yes, I do have a sister. She's got uh, two kids, and she lives in New Hampshire. I got I got four siblings. Oh, well, so I knew about a, the one brother because we yes. talked about him uh, quite a few times. Yeah. So as as it says on my Twitter profile, uh, my parents only raised one dumb child, and since there are five of us, there's a fifty percent chance it's not I, me. You know, I just noticed you also changed it, co-host of the show. I did. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, I figured I'd throw that up there and see if uh, it must be because we're on IMDb now. 
We are on IMDb. Yes, that was a big awesome, thing. Right? Which is I uh, and you. You have a Wikipedia page, do you not? I do not. No. Uh, or the site does. The site. Do, yeah, the site's got some Wikipedia pages. I could probably get our good friend Vinny to do that, uh, who does some editing on that. Uh, Vinny and I actually recorded a show today, which I'll promote briefly if I if I could. Uh, Vinny Lospinuso, he's the young wonderkind of our little group who is Hall of Fame obsessed. And I can't even remember the name of the person he talked about because I never heard of the guy. But uh, he made a case for the guy who created fantasy football. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. So it, it was very interesting. The first time I, I said, like, yeah, I ain't with you on this one. But as always, when you, it's, it's interesting. He's 21, 22, whatever. He teaches me a lot. I, I kind of yeah. enjoy it. I, it's, it's not the worst argument I've ever heard. I mean, what has changed sports more than fantasy sports? it's a big thing that sort of kept it alive that gambling. I mean, like I, and I think I've said this, I, with all the concussion drama and all the other drama, and we're going to talk about a lot of drama in the NFL gambling and, 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 and this stuff, it keeps the NFL will never die. Right. Well, I mean, other than, other than you were a Brit, why else would you be watching the game in London this, this weekend, unless you had guys in the game? I watched so, it because I'm obsessed because I had okay. no guys in that game, but I watched it anyway. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, fair enough. We, we only send them our best and brightest. Oh yeah. Those games. Yes. J E T S. Yes. 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 Anyway. Yeah, Jets, Jets, Falcons. And who is this? It's Jacksonville and Miami. Doesn't matter. Who uh, London game this week. I'll be watching it because I have nothing else to do. My, my wife's going to play um, golf instead. She's leaving me all by myself. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he un unattended yeah. isn't good. <laughs> yeah, I believe it is. I believe it is uh, Miami and Jacksonville. There you go. Battle of Florida and London. That makes sense. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I guess this goes to the next section. Uh, it's elevator up, elevator down, where I give you somebody who I think has done so good in the last week that they've increased their hall of fame chances, which I don't have any or elevator down. <laughs> and I could say Kyrie, who's actually there for the, actually, you know what? I do have an elevator up just because I want to be positive because we're going to, we're going to go sort of in a place. And this is probably going to take a while as we deep dive on this one. Yeah. So uh, someone who's been a previous elevator up and it's a weird one again, but it's Blake Griffin. And I say Blake Griffin because he was just on Saturday Night Live um, as one of the suitors in the Kim Kardashian sketch. I didn't watch it, but well, actually, I, I did watch that one thing after on, on YouTube. Blake Griffin's got something. Uh, he's got a quiet charisma, and he will have a career in something when he can't play anymore. And that can only help keep his name alive. Fair enough. And I like this guy. I don't know that I necessarily like him as a Hall of Famer for what he did on the court. Brooklyn is a contender, uh, mm -hmm. despite what's going on with Kyrie, but they are a contender. Uh, Blake's still a very good player. He, he's not the same guy. He can't do what he used to do. But Blake will be a personality for years to come. And that only helps. Good so, for him. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't have an I don't have an argument there. I honestly think it'll be interesting to see if if Kyrie is not actually going to participate in well, okay. So let's talk about that because he was my pseudo, he was one kind of an, he was a previous elevator down. Yep. And all right, so for the record, and just to be controversial, because why the fuck not? Uh all right, you and I both got vaccinated as soon as we could. I mean, I'm assuming you did. I mean, I know I did. Yeah, so pretty much, yeah. Okay. Uh, Kyrie's choosing not to. I have friends who won't, and fine, they're still my friends. I still love them. Uh, having said that, Kyrie's made a decision, and he's going to stick with this. Kyrie is, I'd be shocked if he decides to get the job. I would. Uh, I'm not going to dump on the nets here for what they decided because i would do the same thing if i were the nets 
ba- chemistry in basketball means more chemistry in sports. It's more in basketball than any other sport combined. I, I honestly believe that. Mm-hmm. So you can't have them in, out, in, out, in, out and be a distraction. Mm-hmm. Much- yeah. You either have to be hundred percent in or hundred percent out. Yeah. I mean, you can do that in baseball. You can possibly do that in hockey. Football, it's harder, but basketball, absolutely not. You can't do it. So mm-hmm. they made the right decision for their team. And so for those who were saying, okay, well, you know what? They're, they're punishing him for his stance. I would have done the same thing. I, I'm a civil liberty guy, but as a business owner, I would do what they're doing. I, I, just, I just want to put that out there. Mm-hmm. And and I have I have to wonder, um, with the distraction being out of there and the fact they were trying to balance three superstars anyway, if not having someone like Patty Mills just handle the ball and get the ball back and forth to Harden Durant, they may not just be better off in terms of ball movement and everything else. I'm not saying Patty Mills is a better player than Kyrie Irving. Because he's not. But because he's but- not. But can you imagine this? Let's say Brooklyn wins the whole thing and Kyrie's not there. Who mm -hmm. takes a bigger shit tumble on a Hall of Fame monitor than Kyrie? It would be interesting to see if Brooklyn ends up trading him. I don't know if anyone would trade for him, but if they could trade him, who they would end up getting back? I don't know. They should trade him to Cleveland for Kevin Love. Just... (laughs) (laughs) That'd be hilarious. It would. Um... Yeah, Kyrie is, here's the thing, guys, and you're free to do what you want, but if corporations are people, they're free to make their own decisions. And as much as people have contracts, they are still at will employees. You can, I mean, there's a contract there, but they don't have to keep you around the team. And if you're in violation of state law, which he's going to be, or at least city law, yeah, I don't and you can't be there for more than half the games, right? Because you can't be for 41 home games, two games against the Knicks, and one game against the Warriors. That's like more than half the season you're not going to be there because of your own decision. They can't run their team that way. No. Uh, and again, I'm not saying which is right, which is wrong. But I am going to say that the Nets' decision was right. Because that's well, yeah, the, I, net, the that, Nets made that, the best decision. That's what I would have done. The Nets made the best decision they could based off the situation they were in. Yeah. Regardless of what you think of Kyrie's stance, for them, there's it's impossible for them to run their team. I agree. I, I, someone I, there, I agree. someone someone uh, is a part-time lover, right? As uh, as Pr- <laughs> Prince would have said. Um, Stevie. It was Stevie. Oh, Stevie. What am I saying, yeah. Prince? Stevie. Um, it does sound like something Prince would have done. It does say something like Prince would do. Yeah. 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 Remember that BC, uh, uh, you should never use uh, uh, numbers as letters unless you're seven or your name is Prince. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad we get some jovial stuff up because. Yeah, we're, we're at Al. So yeah. anyway, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't know what Kyrie can do to come back from this, particularly since the stance he's taking saying he's not anti-vax, but he's standing up for workers' rights, uh, which he was anti this back before there was a mandate. I so I, 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 I don't know. I mean, the NHL came out and said that there are only four, and who knows whether they're telling the truth, but they said there are only four players who are not currently vaccinated in the entire NHL. Okay, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, right. with the season starting. I don't know who the four are, but they said there are only four. Uh, the N- NBA is up over 90% at this point of vaccinated people. Well, I only know two, like him and Jonathan Isaac. I don't know anyone else. Well, even uh, even Wiggins, who tried to get the religious exemption. Oh, is the oh yeah, bullshit. But he, but he got vaccinated. Yeah. Well, because he was fucking lying. There was no, like, what, 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 what was he going to claim that he is? Like, he, he, was throw, he was throwing shit at a wall. Yeah. Like, we knew what that was. But whatever. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, but we'll 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 see what happens. I, I I think this is a definite elevator down for him, though. Yeah, but the biggest elevator down, probably the biggest one ever, since we started doing this segment. Mm. The building has imploded for him. He's not even allowed to walk in there. He was like on, 
what do you say? Like he's, he's sort of like a halfway climbing up all of a sudden to not just the elevator plummeting, but him sort of like having Debo throw him out of the entire building completely. And that's John Gruden. And we can't not talk about him. Uh, this, and I know you sent me a message like a couple of days ago, just like ease your elevator down. Like who else? Right. Cause like, obviously that would have been one of your good, bad and uglies or well, not. Would, would have right. Well, sorry, j just before you get into this, I do want to bring up one quick thing. There's a yeah. fight between two of the chief super fans this week. And one of them got knocked out and put in the hospital and he was interviewed about it. And he said that, uh, that I, he came up to me and deboed me right in the face. I was like, Oh, Kirk would love that. It was, it was fan yes. on fan violence for the chiefs. But anyway, continue. Yes. Yes. So, man, I, I'm oh, okay. So let's just talk about first the obvious thing elevator down because not only is he kicked out of his job, he's done. Yeah. And actually, can I say one other thing? Let's just combine this with the good man, the ugly as well. Sure, please. Because it, there's so many parts to it I want to get into. It's going to cover that anyway. So yeah. continue. Well, continue. Yeah. Uh, all right, so I, I want to be very clear. I am not supporting John Gruden. Uh, some of the emails that sort of came out. Uh, well, actually, let's let's look at them because uh, like one of the first ones was what well, the biggest one that didn't get him fired mm -hmm. was when he was well, referring to Demory Smith. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, who was ahead of the and still is of the NFLPA mm -hmm. and made reference to his lips as being Michelin tires. And his defense was, was that's what he calls liars, rubber lips. I've never heard that before. Mm -hmm. Have you? No, he made it up. Okay. So, which is he, prop. Say, sorry, sorry. I just want to point out, this was his Raphael Palmero moment. <laughs> Raphael Palmero standing in front of Congress saying, I never used anything knowing that he was about to be suspended three weeks later. Like there's no way Gruden could have not known once one of those came out that all of them weren't coming out. Well, no, but I, I will give him that benefit. I mean, benefit of that doubt, because if, you, if you're taking steroids, you know what you did. If you're sending email upon email upon email, like when the whole thing, when he learned months ago, that they were doing a deep dive into all the emails and everything from the Washington football team. You think Gruden thought of anything? Probably never thought of any of the, any email he ever sent to anybody. That's part of his problem. Sure. Sure. But I mean, like it, it's, I, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's not quite the same thing as injecting something in your body. You, you know what I mean? I, I, I understand. I understand. Okay. But I mean, just the idea when he came out and said that, it was one email. It was a 10 years ago. This isn't me. I don't have a racist bone in my body. Yada, yada, yada. To be fair, there was no other racist emails that came out. I guess that's true. Yeah. So anyway, he, this shit comes up. I, I don't necessarily believe it, but I'm watching the Sunday night football game. because this, like, Let's put this in the real time scenario. So this comes out is it Saturday or Sunday uh i think it's been saturday because they. i think we sort of knew about that one email before our last recording didn't we didn't come out like wednesday the first the thing about the i don't first i don't remember but before the sunday night game because mm -hmm. i'm watching mike Tirico, who worked with him with gruden on, on monday night football mm -hmm. defend him saying like and, and jamel hill fuck you i mean like so and this is where i'm gonna say this because like jamel said like you know, we just had all these people sort of like uh, defend you What's Mike's going to say? He's obviously got to say something. You want him to lie? If Mike never heard Jay, or Jay, Jay I'm thinking of, of his brother. If, if, Mike, if, Mike, if Mike never heard John Gruden do anything racist, is he supposed to make something up? Mm -hmm. Like, why can't I believe Mike on this? That he never saw that. He didn't defend him. He just said, like, in my experience, I didn't go through this. Uh, Mike Tomlin, uh, who worked with him, pretty much said, I don't really have much to say other than I feel bad for everyone involved. Uh, yeah, Tony Dungy. This is a tough day for the Raiders. Yeah. Uh, Tony Dungy, pretty much, who worked with him too, said, like, more or less said, said what Mike Tirico said. Uh, 
To be fair, Tony Dungy supports a lot of the anti-gay stuff that he put in there. I'm sure he does. I knew we were going to go there, and we we are. But you know, if if I don't know, if person X is a racist in your, but you don't experience it, why go and say that? You, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm not wording this yeah. very well. I mean, I'm sure you've got people in your life who might you might have come across who said a bunch of stuff. I'm like, well, fuck, I never saw that. And that's your truth. Mm-hmm. So at this point, if that if it just ends there, I don't know if he gets away with this. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm a player under Gruden. Because like prior to this, if you were to say, hey, uh, Gruden's a racist, what would you have said? Like, fuck off, right? I mean, the one that shocked me. Really? Mm-hmm. Why, why you say that? Because like, I, I never heard anything about that about him. Uh, Gruden... I don't have any information on this, but Gruden has, I do agree. I know Keyshawn Johnson is not the best person to be bringing stuff up. Okay. Yeah, okay but let's bring that up. Cause like Keyshawn on, on his thing uh, on, on, I forget what, what, what he does. NFL network. I forget. It doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't Cause matter. like, yeah. Keyshawn, on his platform. On his platform. Yeah. Uh, said like, and he trashed Gruden, but he didn't call him a racist. He said, he's a two face. Right. Which isn't. A used car salesman. Yeah. Yeah. He did say that. So like, the, and Randy Moss, that was weird. Mm. Just, okay. Uh, Cause he just burst out crying. I think there's other things you'd cry about other than this, but whatever, that, that, that's irrelevant. I mean, so, so let, let me just back up to Keyshawn for a second. Yeah, please. So Keyshawn's relationship with Gruden is automatically colored by the fact that Gruden kicked him off the team, essentially, mm-hmm. back in 2003, 2004, something, whatever, yeah. something like that, yeah. where Keyshawn was missing meetings mm-hmm. and came in and told Gruden to his face what he thought of him. And Gruden called the captains in, and allegedly there was a 6 nothing vote to throw Keyshawn off the team, and Keyshawn sat at home for six weeks. So they have like a simmering decade and a half disagreement, at least, coming into this, right? Right. Uh, which may go back a long time. But he is... Grunin has always been a caricature. He doesn't seem like a real person. Does that make sense? So it always yeah, to me seemed that, yeah. like he was covering something up. I'm not saying I thought he was a racist, but if you came out and said... John Gruden's a racist. Would it have shocked me? No, it would okay. not. Have shocked me. No, for, for, okay. How many coordinators has he ever had that were African American? Do you know? Uh, no, I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't read through one. It. And he fired him four games into a season after he had the twelfth ranked defense because he wanted to go in a different direction to replace him with a white dude. Like that doesn't he, make him racist, though. Again, though, but he doesn't. He there. There have just been no, he has an almost entirely white staff over and over and over again. It doesn't shock me. Does he have that now? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know he, the race like, like, okay. off the top of my head. I mean, well, I guess he did have Tomlin in, um, he did have Tomlin in Tampa. Uh, yeah, under, Dungy. Dungy wasn't underneath him. He replaced Dungy. Replaced Dungy. Okay. Well. Anyway, I mean, right, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, up. I'm just saying I wasn't, if you said that to me and said he's a racist, why I've been shocked? No. Are okay. there other people in the league I would have been much more surprised about? Yes. Okay, so fair and enough. So, like, I guess in my case, I was. Um, but with your perspective, I just, I just, he just, that's fine. He doesn't seem like a real person to me. So. Okay, and, and there's not even a wrong, right or wrong answer. I guess when I bring this up, but it, he, he, he seems like one of those preachers who collects money in the name of God so he can buy himself another check. <laughs> okay. Like that's what he would be doing if he weren't coaching football to me. All right. All right. So, so let's say, all right. I, either way, he's completely on hard. I will, I will say this. Uh, let's say he's a low, let's, let's just say he's one of those racists who doesn't know that he's racist. Okay. You know, which, which. Fair. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, because there are some people who, who say, well, I'm not, but they are because they're doing some passive aggressive shit. Mm-hmm. which might be the case for, for Gruden. 
Uh, I don't even know where to go here from this. I, I think what bothers me a little bit, and and again, he should have been fired after all this stuff came out because if I'm if I'm the owner right, of the leaders, that's the thing you said earlier that it didn't the first email and again fired, nothing got him fired. He resigned. Sure. No, 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 no. That's an important distinction. Okay. That's Why? a very important distinction, is, is, okay, particularly well, with the franchise he represents. Because I, I'm a big fan of the Red Sox. The Red Sox have a history of being one of the most racist, backward thinking organizations in sports. Right. The Celtics are one of the most forward race, racial organizations in sports. Okay. Right? Same yeah. city. The yeah. Raiders, when it comes to women, when it comes to uh, breaking barriers, everything, the Raiders are probably the most progressive team. Right. Under the way Al Davis did things ever in 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 sports, the Steelers under the Roonies also have a have a claim for it. Mm -hmm. But there's no question that the Raiders have always been at the forefront, particularly with the inclusion of women. They also happen to have on their team the only openly gay player in the history of the NFL. All right, so so let's go there then, because one of the things that and some of the emails that came out after, right was which is uh, what caused him to actually resign and not get fired which almost makes dave Chappelle right okay you know because like uh Chappelle, did you see the comedy special yeah i haven't seen the comedy special uh i but i've heard about a lot okay, about uh, it more or less i'll sort of break it down I, I i i what i would I, I know i know the number one thing about that but more than okay. anything i think it was the overall the overall avalanche of stuff more than anything, any one specific thing. All right. All right. But yeah, basically though, is like some people, cause like Chappelle was trending with Gruden mm -hmm. on Twitter. Cause that again, cause that's real life, but so if you, okay. So let's go to the, to the thing with, with the gay with the gay stuff. So he, one of the emails that came out, which was him, I, th I think someone should investigate this where he says to uh what's his name alan what i forget his first name the uh, guy the guy right, i knew i knew until you started talking to me uh doesn't matter it, do it doesn't matter who it was but 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 uh, but uh a washington executive bruce allen uh, okay bruce allen thank you uh where he said it's it's awful or i'm paraphrasing of course but that goodell is forcing jeff fisher and Jeff Fisher came out and said he, he wasn't forced to do that. I'll question that, but I don't know. Uh, to uh, draft Michael Sam. Yep. And Michael Sam wa was the first gay player, openly gay player at the draft, was draft eligible. Correct. And he was uh, drafted in like the fifth to last pick of the seventh round in 2014. Right, right. And by the Rams. By the Rams. And this was when he was coming off as the SEC co-defensive player of the year. Correct, so, but had but to be fair, also had terrible measurables in the in the combine. Like he was right. super slow and bad and a bunch of stuff, and so. and possibly sort of flunked a bunch of tests. And yeah. let's let's be blunt, and I, I don't I don't say this to be homophobic. Michael Sam was not mentally ready to be the first gay football player. He wasn't because he was a he was a bust. And then yeah, he went to the great. CFL and he was a mental case. And I, I, not that I could have handled it with that type of pressure. He couldn't. And it was, I would let, and so Fisher again in his Twitter said, like, I was never pressured to do that, which, okay, whichever. But, he, but Gruden used the term queers, mm -hmm. you know, so, so that's sort of like where that came off. Okay. Not the best, not the word I would have used. Yeah. But I hate to say this, six years ago, things were a lot different than they are now. Okay. Still, sh still shitty language. Mm -hmm. I think we can agree on that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Some of the other stuff. Well, he's, uh, he's misogynistic because he sent pictures of topless cheerleaders. Okay, and... 
a heterosexual guy sending uh, sending hot pictures of girls to other people? Is that so bad? I wouldn't yeah. do it on a work email. I, I mean, it, it wasn't just any women. Okay, who was it? They're employees of the Washington Redskins. Oh, he didn't send it. Did he receive it? How did he get it? He didn't work there. They're, they were the cheerleaders of the Washington Redskins. That's what started this whole thing in the beginning. Okay, oh, sure. But and, and, by, and by the way, you haven't even brought up the real, real reason he needed to get fired yet. Okay, which is what? What I miss? The Eric Reed stuff. He said the quiet part out loud about why Kaepernick's not in the league. Okay. That Reed should lose his job because he's kneeling for the anthem. And he sent it to members of the Redskins staff who apparently agreed with him. This whole thing about collusion of keeping Kaepernick out it wasn't collusion. He just wasn't good enough, despite the fact that the well, current Aaron backup Reed was definitely good enough and still is. Well, fine. But the current the current backup for the for the uh, Oakland Raiders is a guy named Nathan Peterman, who may be the worst quarterback of my life. Sure. No, no, I, I, I don't but, even... But my point, my point is this. All the people who are talking about the collusion of keeping somebody out, uh -huh. it's all in there and being agreed to by other members of professional teams. Okay. Here's the thing. That's, that is actually the worst part about this whole thing. That is the actual biggest problem for the NFL. That is the NFL's biggest problem with this whole thing is those emails. Okay, but let's go, let's go to that. John Gruden at that point in time was a Monday Night Football uh, analyst. Analyst, correct. So like, he's voicing his opinions. I don't agree with his opinions, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say, and maybe not, the, and I'm not wording this particularly well, big shock, is I've got a problem when private emails, and again, you can go through my emails. I got nothing to say because like pretty much anything controversial, I'll say, I say to you. <laughs> so like, there's Fair nothing enough. really that out there for anything that I could say. It's just, I, I, I have a problem with the fact that you're doing an investigation on the Washington football team for having a culture like the Ellen DeGeneres show and your casualty is John fucking Gruden. Well, that's, that's a whole separate issue. First of all, in the second, in the secondary. So there's a big investigation with 650,000 emails that, right. in, that is into a, into the then named Redskins franchise, mm -hmm. right? And they're like, oh, we'll give you something. Have John Gruden. And when that wasn't enough, they something got released about Adam Schefter asking or calling and saying, Mr. Editor, is there anything you want to add from a story from 2011? That's why Schefter was trending this morning. Right, yeah. Uh, but but, but, but the, 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 the people are calling for all 650,000 emails to be released, which will which never won't happen. happen. But there, it's, it's part of the whole Defend the Shield thing. That goes on. They're doing an investigation of the Redskins, and the only two people who have gotten busted were two former ESPN employees at the time. Go figure out how that works out. I, I mean, I mean, this all has to come out. It all has to blow over. All right. So, blow so, so let me ask you this. Because one of the things was where he calls uh, Goodell a pussy. Okay. Which, See, now that, that seems more like locker room talk to me than the rest of it. Though. All right. But he did. So hypothetically, if there's nothing there where Goodell gets called that, does, do we know about any of this? Goodell is a figurehead. Right. And he is not a brave man by any means. Mm -hmm. His only role is to protect the owners of that league and make, and make money. He doesn't answer questions. He had the folksy draft from his from his den that one time, but he's right. he's uniformly terrible at his job, except for those two things: making money and protecting the shield. But the shield is the owners, right? So, going and treading in different politics, mm -hmm. right? 
there with COVID, we've had a whole bunch of radio talk show hosts who have passed away from COVID. Over Republican radio talk show hosts okay. who have been anti-vaccine and passed away from COVID. Mm -hmm. And the thing was that they're repeating all the stuff they're hearing from up above and from people who are all vaccinated. All the, Fox at Fox, all the folks at Fox are vaccinated. All the folks at Congress who are railing against it are all vaccinated. And you could tell the difference there in who was selling the bullshit and who was believing the bullshit. There is a difference of class between the people on talk radio and the people who are actually doing everything again. Mm -hmm. This is another difference in class. Okay. People at the top are being protected by the shield and they're willing to throw any number of people under the bus so that it doesn't. So, so you're saying pretty much they threw Gruden under the bus just to avoid this entire potential shit storm with, the, with Washington. Yeah, they were trying to distract people from what, what's actually in there. So all the emails are in there. I don't think there's anything with Snyder that's been released. It's all been the well, former G we're in the wrong business, man. We should sort of like open up a company like, hey, we'll leak everything. Well, so you're, as some people may or may not know, before my current job, I was an attorney. And I did a lot of, of public, uh, what do you call it? Well, let's say investigation into the emails of companies, right? Mm. And I can tell you the crap I've seen from high level executives at companies, and I'm not gonna name any names, I will say this, I did have one company where there was, a, they had an employee in Nigeria who was apparently very attractive, female employee. Five of the executives had a running pool, which I think was up to almost $100,000 or it might've been slightly over. You might wanna hear this? As to who was gonna be able to sleep with her first. Jesus Christ. The, one of the executives, over half of his work hard drive was porn. You want to know what role that executive held within the company? HR? Head of the legal department. So the, these folks at the top just think that they are immune to everything and things are set up to protect them from all this stuff. This is the whole thing that I go, one thing Republicans and Democrats should be able to agree on is that the people at the top who who commit crimes need to be punished for it. I've talked about Linda Green before as part of that investigation. Linda Green was an, is an actual woman who lives in Florida who was paid along with 299 other people to forge documents for the mortgage meltdown. They forged transfer documents. Her name was signed. I saw her name signed 50 different times in 50 different ways by people because she had the shortest and easiest name for of anyone in the room for people to sign. All these documents are forged, vice president of whatever, Linda Green for like 50 different banks. Mm. These are all forgeries that were being used to foreclose on people's homes. Nobody went to jail. Mm. There was no accountability. So this is exactly what's happening again. They're throw, there's that division between the czars of the league and the peons. And as much as John Gruden doesn't think he's a peon, he ain't an owner. So he's a peon. All right. So, so let's uh, go back, like, again, just bring it back to what we do, Hall of Fame and whatnot. So the Buccaneers removed him from the Ring of Honor, but not Warren Sapp. Sorry, just continue. No, uh, th that's exactly where I was going to go with that. Uh, yeah. And not, not that long ago, uh, my favorite baseball team, the Jays, removed Roberto Alomar. Correct, they did. And I said then I wasn't a fan of that. I'm not a fan of this at all. Like, I, I want your take. Selective moralism by franchises is obvious. The Red Sox a few years ago removed Yaki Way from the street next to Fenway. Of course, the street was originally named Jersey Street, which is a great name for a street by a ballpark anyway. Um, but they removed Yaki Way, which was named after the former owner who was a great philanthropist on one hand, I'll be honest, a Jimmy Fund and everything I've done with it, they've raised tons of money for kids' cancer. On the other hand, was a virulent racist who gave five-minute tryouts to Willie Mays and Hank Aaron because he was forced to. 
we're, we're, we're the last thing it up because like we've got to paint a whole balanced thing and and that's sort of like what i try to do for gruden and again I, i'm a saints guy saying something nice about gruden is not my thing right. <laughs> i don't want to and, and I, I, again i don't know that i did because uh, i think he should have been sacked because if you're owning if you're the owner of the raiders well, okay, just to borrow from your world, your past world, the legal world, uh, reasonable doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, electronically, it goes out the window. Right. I mean, like, is a reasonable doubt, like, before there was no reasonable doubt to think that he was a racist. Now, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, every, once everything's in an email, it's recorded and everything else. If there's anything anyone should learn from this is never use your work email for anything other than. Well, he didn't. He sent it to uh, someone's work email. Oh, he sent it to a work email. That yeah. was it. That's correct. Yeah. But I just, Gruden is done. Yeah, he's done. He's the biggest elevator down. I, I think it's going to be next to imp- well, not impossible. This will be a hard elevator down to ever come up with. I, I don't think I'll be able to top this. But if the rest of this doesn't come out, which it won't. If it doesn't, mm-hmm. the pressure on the NFL now is going to be so great. Here's my call. Roger Goodell is out of a job by the end of this season. Be nice. He is. If it doesn't come out, he is hiding everything and protecting whatever, and the pressure is going to be ridiculous on him after the way this came out. If it does come out with the way with what I think is being protected. Snyder's going to be out. We'll see whoever else. Would it shock me if, I mean, almost all these guys are, are, I mean, Woody Johnson was a member of the Trump administration, right? A lot of these guys are politically connected and feel like they're not, like, I mean, my own owner, Bob Kraft. Mm Mm-hmm. Kraft was getting a massage plus in Florida. And if not for a sting operation, and again, there, there was another thing, the police lied about it being part of a sex trafficking ring. Uh, and that whole thing getting thrown out because he had good lawyers. Like, they're, not all these guys are nice guys. A lot of them are fucking scumbags. To be fair, Bob Kraft is not, he might be a scumbag for other reasons. Getting a hand job and paying for it. Yeah, I don't know. I, that and, doesn't and make him a bad guy. And and, and he's not married. Like his no. wife is pa- his wife has passed away. Right. Uh, but the the whole thing the whole thing which you'll still see out there is that it was a sex op sex. Uh, sure. I mean, like, not that it matters. I mean, like, I, I'm a happily wife. married guy, and I would never cheat on my wife ever. But I I, I believe in I, I think prostitution should be legal. Why does right. it I, matter? I, 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 yeah, a lot of things that should be legal and regulated. Yeah, so I mean, like, I could give it when that happened with with Kraft. I mean, like, I didn't give a shit. Yeah, we, right, but a lot, but a lot of people did, and it's probably why he's not in the Hall of Fame yet. So, yeah. I mean, gam just by the way, gambling and weed have now become legal in their lifetimes. Basically, prostitution seems like it's maybe two things again. Two other things I don't give a shit about. If you want to gamble your money away, go knock yourself out. Uh, yeah. And if you're high on weed, you know. You can tell the people are high in weed when they're driving. They're going 30 on the highway. I drive better when I'm stoned, man. Yeah. So but yeah, um, that, that, that's my elevator down. I just want to move off. I of mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. I just think that this is a massive, massive firestorm for the NFL. It'll uh, get swept under like everything else always does. I don't believe this will. We'll see. Uh, I don't want to be right? The, the pressure being put on the people who are pushing this, because right now there is a there is a lawsuit against the NFL and against the Reds or the former Redskins, Washington football team, right? In terms of a work thing, and the only people. people, what it was 40, 40 accusers, I believe. Yeah, and the only people who have had any repercussions are not the Redskins. So if they have any lawyers whatsoever who are any good at their job, they're going to be shouting about this every single day forever. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just want to close off with this. I mean, I, I do think it's very, 
convenient that certain emails were leaked were leaked and i put in the, oh, the, the nfl didn't do it though they told oh, us please yeah yeah they didn't do it yeah so i mean like goodell was served on a platter or goodell uh gruden was served on a platter i i don't know that i i do want to okay i'm going to finish off with one more thing i keep saying to finish off and then i add one more thing i don't think that that gruden's a piece of shit i do think he's used antiquated language Okay. Uh, uh, I disagree, but go ahead. no, and, and you might be right. I mean, we're, we're not going to know for sure. I mean, like maybe his passive aggressiveness did sort of like come through. I think I want to wait for more people who know him better to sort of like say that. Uh, either way, he had to go. But when, when people are comparing him to Hitler, which I've read, like, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, like, he, it, I don't know. Like, he's not the worst thing that's ever happened to football, which I've also read. Like, that's no, not he's accurate. He's definitely not the worst thing to happen to football. No, he won't even be the worst thing that happens this, this year. I agree uh, with you, but for different reasons. <laughs> no, 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 fair enough. It's just. I just, I just want things to be put in perspective. So I, I don't want it to come off like I'm just saying like he should have kept his job because I don't think that. Because if you if you lose your locker room, you've got to go. I don't care what the reason is. Correct. Because you I'm actually yeah. I'm actually sort of glad in this whole thing for Car- Carl Nassib or Nassib or however you pronounce his last okay. name. Yeah. You know what? What? Yeah. Because he would have had to have answered questions about this. He may still have to. Yeah. But it may blow over for him after a couple of weeks. He was going to have to answer questions about this for the rest of the year. Otherwise. Keep in mind, though, he felt comfortable enough to come out with Gruden as his head coach. True. So, I, I, again, I, what that means, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know what it means either. You know, it, it, but, it, it could be that just, again, just because he used certain language doesn't necessarily mean, like, I don't know, I, I call Trudeau a pussy all the time. Want to call me a sexist? You're not I will really say though, here on that. Female, female, female genitalia. Using that as a derogatory term, like that pushes like human babies out of it, and still works afterwards. I get like flicked on the nuts, and it I can't walk for like. Fair enough. Minutes. When I say that, I'm thinking of it in a different sort of derogatory. I, I know, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm just, I was just saying in general. No, just, no, no, and you're right. Just, you're just right. start calling people nut sex. It's better. My favorite term is cock knocker. I don't even know what that means. That's I just one. like the way that sort of rolls off the tongue. I like, I like nutsacks because they're just like, they're there. They're not very sturdy. They're kind of superfluous seeming. Right. I know what they do, but like. Uh, let's, let's get the hell off of Gruden. <laughs> yeah. On a nice note, let's end on a nice note. Well, we're going to start at well. How do we end on a nice note when your when your closer is the ugly? Oh, I just I told you just skip good, bad, and the ugly and just go into this this time. All right. Because I mean, this is I could talk about Brett Favre being an a hole and still owing the state of Mississippi one point one million dollars <laughs> for him not showing up for something. I could talk about how Iowa I'll, and Penn I'll pay state, you in dick pics. Oh God. I saw I saw Favre trending on Twitter today. I'm like, oh dear God, what did he send in an email? Um, <laughs> I could I could go uh, Iowa and Penn State accusing each other of uh, like the pe- coach of Penn State said that his players were getting injured because Iowa's offense is too slow. Eh? I was accusing Penn State of like faking injuries, and Penn State's coach Frank his last name's Frank. I can think of his first name. Was like, yeah, our guys are getting injured because your offense is so slow. That's a new one. I didn't quite get that one. Uh, there, there were a few, there were a few stupid things this week, but yeah, I just, I figured we'd just do that. But on a good, let's just end on a good. Sure. Uh, I just want to do congratulations to the youngest-looking ninety-year-old in the country, Canadian Captain James T. Kirk himself, ah! William Shatner. Yeah. Today became the oldest person ever to go into space. First to pay in space. Yep. He is, yeah, first to pay. Uh, another weird outline 
I've been on Schaffner's old toupee, found it on eBay. Sorry. Um, my name's yeah. Nick Hayes. My name's Nick. He, honestly, for 90, he looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. He looks amazing for 90 years old. He looks at least 20 to 30 years younger. Now, I'm not exaggerating with that. He's no, bloated. Not, not at all. He's bloated, but he's no more bloated than Val Kilmer. So, like, <laughs> or, or Alec Baldwin, for that matter. Like, you look back at, uh, you look back at, um, uh, at Hunt for Red October, that dude's head mass has doubled since that point. You know, not, I didn't bring that up. I mean, does Shatner look that much different than he did in his TJ Hooker years? Not particularly. No. I mean, he's, he's, he's fleshier in the face, but not particularly. Yeah. Good for him, dude. Like, it what, felt, what are the odds good. that William Shatner, like, he's basically, he and Hur and, Take, and George Takei, although is, um, is Chekhov still alive? I don't actually know. I don't know. I, I know Uhura. I think she's got dementia now. Before she does. Out. Yeah, I saw something about that. Sulu was talking about that not too long yeah. ago. Chekhov, actor. Because young Chekhov. Walter Koenig. Walter Koenig. Yeah, he is. Uh, well, because the, the younger one, Anton Yelchin, got killed yeah, he, by his own yeah. car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Walter Koenig is 85 and still alive. Yeah. But um, yeah, because Anton Yelchin got out of his car to fix something and it rolled back and trapped. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, he, he got out. There was a noise and he got out to check the back of the cars, I believe, and it rolled yeah. backwards. Yeah, I didn't know that. And crushed in between his car and the gate of his own house. Oh, my God. At 23. Which is just not the way. I mean, I don't know if there's any good way to go, but that doesn't seem like the way I'd want to go. In your sleep. Yeah, I want to go peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather, not screaming in fear like the passengers in his car. <laughs> well done. Hold on. Hold on. Thank you. That's an old joke I borrowed from someone. No, no, we need, we need some levity after the like, 20 minutes of fucking John Gurdon. Jesus. Yeah, I mean... It's, but, but how do we not talk? We gotta talk about this guy. The biggest. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'll this, I'll just end with this. Gruden is the tip of the iceberg. I said this coming in. I understand why the Raiders accepted his reg- resignation. Mm-hmm. Al Davis would have fired him. I'm just all I'm saying. Al Davis would have fired him before he got before he accepted his resignation. Mark Davis is a kinder, gentler, worse haircutted man. Um, so yeah, Mark Davis's haircut there. Well, let's end there. Mark Davis's haircut legitimately looks like, did you ever see the original stand? Like not the remake they just made last year with Whoopi Goldberg, but the original one with, uh, Stan, the stand. Oh, the stand. Okay. The mini series from the late eighties with uh, Gary Sinise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whoever played Tom Cullen in that, I can't remember what the actor's name is. The guy who gets Bill like, something or other. Fagger, Bill Fagger. Yeah, M O O N, that spells Tom Cullen. Yeah, the guy who he was, uh, crap, he was in coach. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that he like basically cut his own hair for that whole thing. Like he literally put a bowl over his head and cut it. How like, Mark you, Davis this- saw that and was like, that's what I'm going for. How are you that rich and you don't have a stylist or just somebody? Or- or a mirror that that might be it too well the i guess when you're that rich you know like who gives a shit true I, I i i don't know i will say if anyone's come out of this whole thing looking good it's honestly mark davis <laughs> but I, and I'll also over here i know and i'll and also say this i i do think that gruden had already lost the locker room i don't know if you saw that game against the bears i did last week they looked completely uninterested in that game. Well, that's the thing with football. Right? When you know that your head coach is in trouble, like whenever that sort of happens, bet against that team. True. The and other biggest single time. The other biggest winner this week, of course, is Urban Meyer. No, and the just, biggest losers, and the biggest losers are anyone who thought that Urban Meyer was going to be the first coach gone. <laughs> Urban Meyer had a stay of execution. That's all that was. I can't believe they're letting him go to London. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. 
<laughs> that is true. It has not happened yet. What are the odds he doesn't come home with the team? Just decides to stay there. Well, it, it depends. It's like, uh, I mean, some are some London chicks really hot for it to grind their ass crack into him? I, I if I know. learned anything from Austin Powers, the answer is probably. Um, <laughs> I mean, right. let's, let's be honest. Urban Meyer is going to be the coach of USC next season. So we'll be. And he should. Uh, he should. Just the NFL is not for you. Yeah, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's he's not, the, he's not the first one. It didn't work for Nick Saban. No. Nope. Uh, I, I guess it's worked out for, I guess, although he was a, Pete Carroll was a uh, head coach in the NFL before he went to USC. P, uh, Pete oh, Carroll yeah. might be the, uh, the exception of that rule in the last 20 years. Bill, Bill Walsh was a coach at Stanford after Niners. Was he a coach in college? Yeah, but Stanford before? wasn't Stanford. That's also true. Yeah. You know, like it, it okay. wasn't, it wasn't quite the same. I'm just, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head if there's anyone else. I'm sure, I'm sure there is, but like, yeah, off the top of my head, yeah. Er, like, this was going to be a terrible fit. It's just like, hey, you did really good for the college nearby. Hey, could you bring in Tim Tebow? At least like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Jacksonville, Jacksonville is just the worst NFL city, period. I still remember when they got the expansion franchise back in like 1991, they started in 93, but back in like 91, when they got the franchise, just being like Carolina and Jacksonville. Really? Yeah, but Jacksonville is not supportive of that. I mean, I, I still think the worst sports city ever is Atlanta. Mm. I'd like to be proven wrong on that, but. They're the, they're the only. And the only American sports city that's lost not one but two franchises to Canada. <laughs> There's that. They're the and only that, one that's lost one, and they're also the only one that's lost two. Yeah, and, so and you don't the, flame, the Flames and Jets. Yeah, and are both former NHL franchises based in Atlanta. They got the Braves and the Hawks, and they don't sell out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've I've been saying for years now that Jacksonville is. They they play one home game in London every year. They've been angling to be the London team whenever that happens for years. Silly nannies. Do it. Trademark it. The London silly nannies. <laughs> Probably right. be something stupid like the like the Knights. Although uh, the beef eaters would be hilarious. The Ooh. London beef eaters. Ooh. So, yeah, yeah but I mean, it, and it's easy to do. You just switch Miami into the South move Jacksonville in with the Patriots, Jets, and Bills. Mm-hmm. Slight real, realignment. As a Patriots fan, I am all in favor of that. The fewer games we have to spend in Miami, the better off the team is going to be. <laughs> nice. So. nice. Well, I guess this ends our show. Are you sure? Is there anyone else we can just decide to... To shit on? I mean, it was the whole John Gruden uh, tribute hour. The roast. Mm-hmm. Here's, here's a question for you. As a possible elevator up out of this whole, whole thing. Yeah. Ready? Before sure. we leave. Yeah. What does this do for Amy Trask? Nothing. You don't think it does anything for the league to be like, hey, we're going to put a woman executive in? She's just, but before no. I say that, before I say that, she is worthy of consideration on her own, regardless of whether she's a man or a woman. Amy Trask uh-huh. was, was incredibly important in the history of the Raiders. But I'm just wondering if the nominating committees are asked to consider her a little more closely. No, I don't think so. There's just think so? So, no, only not because of anything against her. No, just, of course not. It, it, there's just so many people. Yeah. Even if she jumps up like five spots, like how many spots is she still behind in terms of contributors? True. I mean, mostly that's what, sort of why I say that. Uh, and truthfully, that's not the right reason to put anyone in, anyway. All right. Which which you'd agree with, I'm sure. See, the the NFL does things for the right reason. The NFL does things kicking and screaming. Right. Well, so, I, I yeah, I guess that's sort of like the one thing out of this. Like, how the fuck is Goodell the good guy out of this? He's not. He's Goodell. No, but but, old... but depend. But in some of the articles, it's like, well, he called Goodell a pussy. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Goodell's, okay. Goodell's as, as far as everyone's concerned, Goodell is entirely incompetent at his job except for punching the Patriots. Like anything else he touches is 
clearly wrong. But if he punishes the Patriots, national pundits are all about it, right? Mm -hmm. Even though he can't do that right because he, he destroyed the tapes from Spygate, even though they were shown to the media. So, well, right, right now, Rob Manfred's saying, mm, see, I ain't so bad. No, 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 no. Gary Bettman looks amazing. Hall of Famer Gary Bettman. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> based, be honest, based on the level of commissioners and Hall of Fame, Gary Bettman's in the top half. I, I maintain that Gary Bettman, after he became a Hall of Famer, became a Hall of Famer. He's a significantly better commissioner now than he was a few years ago. I agree with that. Which is crazy to say that, especially yeah, but, as a Canadian, because we hate him. But I mean, is that just by comparison or is it? Yes. Yes, and both. We'll, we'll yeah, to what you also are going to say. Yeah, I just, it's amazing. Adam Silver is, is the best commissioner in the four major sports, and I still say the other Slumping, three are tied. Yes. The, the other, I used to say the other three are tied for fifth. Yeah. I, I think that Bettman's at least moved to fourth, and yeah. the other two are tied for fifth. So. And, and Silver doesn't have the same shine, pardon the pun, that he used to. They used to. No, agreed. Yeah. He doesn't. So, but anyway, well, we shall see going on. I, uh, I have another wild prediction for you. Ready for this one? Ready. Rod Manfred, when he resigns at some point here, yeah. is going to be replaced by a mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> by Joe West. No. Uh, <laughs> by, uh, by Mr. Epstein, Theo Epstein. I thought you were going to say Jeffrey Epstein, like he's dead. No. No, Theo yeah. Epstein. I think that's the job Theo is waiting for. Interesting. Okay. So, right. what else he can do? He's, he's broken the Red Sox curse. He's broken the Cubs curse. I guess he could go try and break the Guardians curse. But, like... Guardians. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Next year. The yeah. Indians have played their last game. Yeah, I guess so. I guess I got to change that on the site. Top 50 Cleveland Guardians? Oh, well, whatever. Put, put the team formerly named the Spiders. Meh, that's fine. <laughs> All right, man. We've tried to get out of here three times. All right. Stay safe, everybody. See you later, guys.